Hello, students, and welcome back to another exciting episode of Mr. Armstrong Teaches. Today's topic, pronouns, part one. Pronouns is something that we've seen in a lot of the other videos that I have posted. Today we're going to focus on it, though. We're going to mostly focus on two types. But first, go ahead and write down all the types. Now... Subjective pronouns, objective pronouns, possessive pronouns, reflexive pronouns, and other. In today's video, we're mostly just going to focus on those first two topics, subjective and objective. Those are very common. We have seen a lot of those already. Possessive, reflexive, and other will be reviewed in pronouns part two. Those other pronouns we've also practiced a little bit this year sometimes we've looked at words like adjectives that can sometimes be noun determiners or limiting adjectives but that's only if they are in front of a noun if they're all by themselves then they behave as pronouns we'll talk about that a little bit more in the next video like i said once again in this video we're going to talk about subjective pronouns and objective pronouns let's not waste any more time the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and write down the lists of these different types of pronouns. The subjective pronouns, also called nominative pronouns sometimes, and then objective pronouns. These are them. Write them down. I, he, she, you, it, we, they, who. These are words you know. Those are all the subjective pronouns. Me, him, her, you, it, us, them, whom. These are words you know, and they are considered objective pronouns. Depending on what part of speech you're going to be looking at will decide which column you need to be choosing from. But you're not going to be able to choose from either column if you don't have a nice list of them, so write them down. Did you do it? Pause if you need to, because we're moving on. Let's begin with subjective pronouns. Go ahead and write this down. As you may have noticed, the word subject is in the word subjective. And so, of course, subjective pronouns can be the subject of a sentence. Remember when I said also that these can be called nominative pronouns? And so also, they could be in the place of the predicate nominative in a sentence. If you need reviews on the predicate nominative, you can go back and look at linking verbs or review predicate nominatives in general. But these are the words that can be interchangeable in a sentence. And so it makes sense that the same group of pronouns would fit in either spot. Let's look at some examples. They went to the store. They is the subject of that sentence, and they is one of the pronouns on the subjective pronoun list. She is our new teacher. She is the simple subject of that sentence, and it's from the subjective pronoun list. I could also invert that sentence. In that sentence, she is our new teacher. Teacher is the predicate nominative. She is the subject, but she is teacher, and teacher is she. And so if I wanted to invert that, I could write, our new teacher is she. Teacher is the new subject, and she is a predicate nominative. Got it? And so once again, if it is the subject or the predicate nominative of a sentence, and you want to use a pronoun, it has to be from the subjective pronoun list. I hope you wrote all those down, because it's time to move on to objective pronouns. Okay, go ahead and write this stuff down. As you may have noticed, the word object is in the word objective. And so objective pronouns are going to go into all of the spots that have the word object in them. So the object of a preposition, the object that's in a prepositional phrase, or the direct object, the thing that receives the action of a transitive verb, or an indirect object, the thing that receives the direct object. If you're going to substitute a noun in any of these different parts of a sentence, then it has to be from the objective pronoun list. Let's take a look at some of these examples. The first one, Hayden will go with him. In this sentence, Hayden is the simple subject. Will go is a verb phrase. And we have a single prepositional phrase, with him. Him is a pronoun, substituting for some guy. Maybe it's Bexley, with Bexley. But in this instance, we've used the pronoun him from the objective pronoun list. It is the object of the preposition with. Or how about the dog befriended us? In this instance, us is behaving as a pronoun and a direct object, the thing that was befriended by the dog. Dog is the subject. Befriended is what the dog did, the verb. And who was befriended? Us. Once again, us is from the objective pronoun list. And us is the direct object in this sentence. And then finally, mom threw me the football. Mom is the subject. Threw is the verb. Football is the direct object. But who received the direct object? Me. 
Me is an indirect object. It is also a word from the objective pronoun list. See? Not too complicated. Did you write all that stuff down? The last thing I wanted to talk about a little bit in this video is the difference between who and whom. There's a lot of confusion about this, but it's pretty simple if you break it down to the grammar basics. Who is a subjective pronoun. Both of these are question pronouns, but who is a subjective pronoun and whom is an objective pronoun. So if it's going to be, once again, the subject or the predicate nominative of the sentence, you have to use who. But if it's going to be an object of a preposition, a direct object, an indirect object, then it would be whom. So for example, who is the leader? In this instance, who is the subject of the sentence? And so who comes from the subjective pronoun list? Or you could reverse that and say the leader is who? And then once again, who comes from the subjective or the nominative pronoun list because it is the predicate nominative in this sentence. But for whom, in the example, to whom will you write? To whom is a prepositional phrase. And so we have to use an objective pronoun as the object of the preposition, to whom, or Turtle kicked whom? Whom is behaving as a direct object in this sentence, receiving the action of the kick. Or Austin tossed whom the ball? Whom is behaving as an indirect object, receiving the direct object, ball. Austin the subject tossed. Ball is what he tossed. Whom received it? We don't know. That's why we're asking. Some of these may sound a little clunky or awkward. I think a lot of times nowadays, the word whom just sounds kind of formal or old fashioned, but there are specific and technical rules for it. And now you know them. Maybe you can correct some people someday now that you can explain it. Did you write all that stuff down? I hope so because that's the end. Once again, this is just part one of pronouns. We just focused on the first two, subjective and objective. In the next video, we'll look more at possessive and reflexive. We'll also do a quick review of some of the other types of pronouns that pop up every now and again. Those are mostly words that can sometimes be pronouns, sometimes not be pronouns. I have covered some of those in previous videos, but we'll look at it in the context of pronouns in the next video. I promise. If you have any questions, as always, you can post them in the comments below or you can ask me in class. Have a great rest of your day and I look forward to teaching you again very soon.